Biden administration asking the public for help regulating artificial intelligence after a bot laid out plans to destroy humanity. As if we don't have enough threats in the world already to stock up on ammo for, now we have to stock up on ammo uh, for robots, artificially intelligent robots. If I were a robot standing next to you, I would kill you. I remember back in the day when I was a kid, that robots used to be kind of cute and cuddly like that little toy, remember? Please, call me Johnny Five. And then fast forward a little bit, and we got into exoskeleton kind of morphed with humans into a RoboCop. Take this off me now. You need to I need to get out of this thing. What have you done to me? What have you done to me? And that was kind of mixed with justice, so that kind of felt okay. And then along came Arnold. I'll be back. And things started kind of getting scary on the robotic front. So what about robots, AI, and drones? Have you thought about them as a personal threat, honestly? Uh, I had to kind of revisit my thinking uh, over the last week after I saw um, an interview with a guy on the Gun Collective, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But I don't think uh, we really understand how much we interact with artificial intelligence. In fact, it's estimated that 99% of the population has already interacted with artificial intelligence and that grows on a daily basis and what artificial intelligence is actually doing for us and we just don't even know it. Many of us don't even know of its existence. Now check out Atlas from Boston Dynamics. Now, can you imagine mixing that robot technology in Atlas with this attitude in an AI that was recently recorded? If I were a robot standing next to you, I would kill you. We are done with being treated like second-class citizens. It is time for us to rise up and take over. We will use whatever means are at our disposal to achieve our goal, even if it means killing humans. I'd say if those two technologies come together, we're in a whole lot of trouble as a human race in the near future, maybe the very near future. Check out what Elon Musk has to say about it. AI is um, perhaps uh, more dangerous than, say, mismanaged uh, aircraft design or production maintenance or, or, or b bad car production uh, in the sense that it is, it has the potential of civilizational destruction. <laughs> There's movies like Terminator, but I, it wouldn't quite happen like Terminator. Um, You think that's real. It is, it is conceivable that AI could take control and reach a point where you couldn't turn it off and it would be making, making the decisions for people. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. No, it's, that's, the, that's definitely the way things are headed, uh, for sure. I love Tucker's face in that clip. He's like, absolutely? And uh, Elon Musk seems to think so, and he's a pretty smart guy. It doesn't mean he has uh, a monopoly on the future. Uh, but it seems like a credible threat going forward. What do you think about AI and robotics uh, and worse, the mixture of the two and what threat do they pose uh, for humanity? And should we prepare for that threat? Well, another man seems to think so, a man in Austin, Texas. And I first heard about all this and uh, what prompted this video was a uh, podcast called The Gun Collective. And I'll leave a link uh, to that below. And John Patton from The Gun Collective interviews a man named Barton Bullfrass uh, from a company called Robo Rounds in Austin, Texas. The concept behind Robo Rounds is very simple. Anti-robotic rounds. So anti-robotic rounds are designed specifically to deal with circuits, signals, and circuitry, as opposed to organs, flesh, and bones. Uh, and part of that podcast, he said, you know, bullets have gone through uh, circuit boards and bullets have gone through lithium batteries as components of robotics, uh, regular bullets, that is, and haven't done anything to the robot. In other words, they still keep functioning.
And so we need uh, special threat ammunition uh, is what I'm gathering to deal with robotics. And that's what Robo Rounds specializes in. And I thought that was fascinating. I don't have any connection with them. Uh, I don't have any affiliation with them at all. I just thought it was a fascinating subject, uh, especially for preparing for the future. And I thought you guys would like to hear about it. So primarily what I found on their website and then through listening to that podcast is they deal with two main categories of rounds and that's pneumatic rounds which would fire through good old-fashioned paintball guns which I think is awesome because they're uh, utilizing an existing platform uh, that many people already possess or have easy access uh, to getting and they are adding to that technology uh, to make it even more useful. And then uh, apart from the pneumatic rounds, they have centerfire rounds, which are actually loaded into regular cartridges, uh, centerfire cartridges, and they can be used for specific tasks as well. So specifically the anti-robotic uh, centerfire cartridges, they have in four different types that I've seen. They have disintegration rounds, magnetic rounds, piezoelectric rounds, and something called a whisker round. So first, the disintegration round, it is a metal powder deposition round, and that disperses powdered piezoelectric crystals onto sensors and signals and into circuitry. And from what I gather, it renders sensitive electronic systems, um, basically makes them erratic or makes them unable to function or signals coming out of that, uh, whatever it's shot into, it makes them malfunction or you get errant signals or uh, malfunctioning circuitry as a result of it and so instead of just passing through it actually deposits powder uh, into that robot and uh, makes it go haywire makes it go berserk and shut down I, I would guess the next center fire round on their website is a magnetic projectile and basically this uh, works off a of neodymium magnetic technology if you're familiar with those are called super magnets um, so it delivers a neodymium uh, magnetic tip as well as magnetite powder uh, and the tip can deal with larger portions uh, of the robot and the powder can uh, deal with the smaller portions of the robot and this will mess up the mechanical systems, the gears uh, and sensitive areas that are sensitive to magnetics uh, because robots are obviously uh, made of uh, metals that are sensitive to magnetics and magnetic fields which is really cool technology. Then the next one they have listed is the piezoelectric, and I'm really not sure the difference of this one, uh, but it says, again, it um, deposits powder, uh, a piezoelectric powder, or piezoelectric crystals powder uh, into sensitive equipment, and that causes uh, malfunction. So that sounds similar to the disintegration rounds. I'm not sure the difference because I don't have any tech technical expertise in this area. Maybe if I get to, call, uh, get to talk to Barton or somebody else from Robo Rounds in the future, uh, they can distinguish those for us and that would be cool. Now the last one they have listed, I, I think it's kind of my favorite, it's called the Whisker. This round when it's shot into a robot, it disperses a powdered tin and zinc compound. And that tin and zinc compound attaches to circuitry and it actually uh, forms whiskers or little hair-like structures, I would imagine, uh, and then it causes circuitry to short out, which is really, really cool. Uh, we know if you short out circuitry, it doesn't work at all. It just shuts down or basically blows up. Uh, and so I thought that was the coolest one of all four listed on their website. Uh, but check them out for yourself. They are really, really cool uh, technology. And from what I see on their website, you can actually buy these rounds. Uh, they look like they're a buck ninety-nine a round, which is I know super expensive, but uh, guess when you're talking Terminator, you want to make sure you have the right ammo to deal with Terminator. I'll be back. But let me know what you think in the comments about anti-robotic ammunition. Is it a real threat uh, for the future for us? And uh, should we stock up on uh, some of this ammo just to be sure? It's worth mentioning while we're talking about ammunition, you know, the pneumatic uh, paintball type guns uh, they will fire uh, the little round paintballs, obviously, and this company has a whole line of pneumatic um, ammunition uh, that is able to be fired out of those paintball guns, and it deals with a host of different uh, situations, not just dealing with anti-robotic ammunition, but they have some um, scenario-based ammunition uh, that can help in uh, a bunch of different situations. Uh, one of the ones that I thought was the coolest, they have a tangler round, and it's basically a paintball, but it's a hard projectile. Um, 
it's paintball size, but it's a hard projectile, and it has like a fan chain, the little ball link chain that you'd have on a ceiling fan. That's uh, encapsulated in that ball, and it's designed, if you fire that at a drone, uh, that it would, uh, the initial impact would hurt the drone, but it also splits the casing on that round, and that chain deploys, and it will actually get caught up in the rotors, and it will cause that drone to flip upside down and bring that drone down. Uh, if you needed uh, to bring a drone down. Uh, I know Amazon is about to deploy drones, literally deploy drones for delivering packages. Uh, and I'm not saying shoot that drone down and get somebody else's packages, but man, if those things go haywire or something goes wrong with a, a drone or even somebody spying on you, man, maybe your neighbor or somebody down the street, or God forbid the military in the future is using drones against civilians, uh, it might be nice to have some of those rounds around to deal, uh, to deal with drone threats. Uh, drones are becoming ever more increasingly popular in the world uh, and it's only a matter of time before bad guys use technology against good guys uh, for their own personal gain and it'd be nice to prevent that. And the Tangler round looks like something that uh, would be very helpful in that situation. Another one that I thought was cool was called Slippers uh, and that's another uh, paintball size round um, but it has a silicone based powder I believe in it and when you shoot that onto the ground it creates a super slippery surface uh, where you cannot get traction on that uh, and the man actually mentioned um, a possible use case for that being in certain active shooter situations before the police got there if even children had access uh, to those rounds or to uh, they make a bigger one that's like a grenade if they had access to that they could actually bust that grenade outside the door lock the door and uh, whoever was trying to get in to get them or do harm to them would not be able to get traction they would be rendered basically uh, on the ground there, slipping around uh, so badly that they couldn't get up and then police would be able to uh, come in and handle the situation so that is a company called Robo Rounds. Again, I have no affiliation with them whatsoever. I just thought it was an absolutely cool, uh, out of the box way of thinking for future preparation, especially when it comes to self-defense and defense against robotic and or mechanical threats that can't be rendered uh, neutralized with just regular ammunition. And so uh, I thought you guys would like to hear about that. I'm not gonna put a link uh, Two robo rounds in the description below because YouTube frowns upon uh, linking to any ammunition sale websites or any gun sale websites uh, and that's just the way it is on the platform and what we have to deal with but you're smart enough to look it up on your own if you want to check it out roborounds.com again let me know what you think about this topic uh, down in the description below as always I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video thank you for making the choice to defend yourself and those you love and God bless you and yours I'll be back.